Welcome to this Blood Bowl focused episode of Optimal Game State. In our previous videos, we introduced the game and covered the sevens format for quick games. In this video, we'll delve a little deeper and explore the different types of teams in Blood Bowl. These teams can be broadly divided into four groups. Bash teams that focus on inflicting casualties, finesse teams that rely on ball control, hybrid teams that combine both aspects, and stunty teams that prioritize fun over competitive business. If you're just starting to expand your team beyond the core Black Orc and Imperial Nobility, it may be beneficial to pick up a Bash team and a Finesse team to experience different playstyles. The video will cover what you need to purchase to fully play the team, as one box may not include all the positional players. Positionals refer to the non-linemen players, such as Blitzers and Throwers, who are generally more skilled but have a limited number allowed on the field. Additionally, we will indicate whether the team is considered Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3 under the current GW ratings. Like tiers in other competitive games, these give an idea which are the top teams, with Tier 1 teams winning the most, and Tier 3 the hardest to win with. As you become a more experienced coach, you can have a lot of fun playing a weaker team to even the playing field against new coaches. Let's get stuck in. Bash Teams A Bash team in Blood Bowl prioritizes brute force over speed and agility. Their objective is to overpower their opponents and take control of the game once they're down. To achieve this, bash teams have players with high armor values to withstand hits and the strength and or skills to dish them out. Once the opposing team is weak, the bash team can advance down the field to score, as long as they remember to do so. It's easy for a bash team to get too focused on inflicted injuries, but it is just a means to an end. You still need to score touchdowns to win. Currently there are 8 teams that fit into this category, each with their own unique approach to the bash playstyle. First up, the Orc team. The box has two Blitzers and two Black Orcs, but you really want four of each. These are the backbone of your list. You can also take up to four Goblins, which are not included in the box at all. The Blitzers are fast at move 6, and are great at taking down ball carriers, or carrying the ball themselves with their block skill. Meanwhile, the Black Orcs, or Biguns as they're now called, sit on the front line at strength 4 to wreck your opponent. You can add to this mayhem with a troll, making that front line pretty terrifying. Everything else is made up with a combination of linemen, goblins, and maybe a troll. The troll has pass on sure hands, which can come in handy, but they'll mostly be used as ball carriers if you have one, as there isn't really a receiver. Add to that the animosity skill, they'll refuse to hand off the ball 1 in 6. One important thing trolls do is free up other players. Without a troar, your ball carrier is either a strength 2 goblin or a blitzer who would otherwise be on the front line throwing blocks. As the team isn't particularly fast, the team focuses on brutalizing the opponents to make it up the field. Goblins do have move 6, ag 3 and dodge so they can play a little ball and since the troll has a troll teammate and the goblins have right stuff, you can have a lot of fun making poor decisions. Dwarf teams are renowned for grinding their opponents down typically holding onto the ball in super defensive formations, scoring only twice all game. All the linemen start with block, which is a big advantage. They also have tackle, so dwarf teams can be a menace for any team relying on the dodge skill. All the positionals, the troll slayer, runner and blitzer, are all limited to two, so the box does have a full set. The blitzers and runners will be your ball carriers, as they are ag 3 and 5 and 6 movement. The linemen are all move 4, so you're going to be spending a lot of time caging up and moving slowly down the field. You do have the option to get a death thrower, which is a lot of fun, but it is a very expensive secret weapon which will get sent off, so you might be better passing on it to keep simple through. Shambling Undead Your positionals are whites, ghouls and mummies. The whites are essentially blitzers having move 6 and block. The ghouls are runners with dodge and move 7, while the mummies are for standing on the front line with their strength 5 and mighty blow. The rest of your team is made up of skeletons and zombies. The zombies are better armor, so you'll normally put them on the front line, while the skeletons are move 5, so they're better for covering the field. All but the whites and ghouls have the regeneration skill. This means if they get injured, 50% of the time, they go into reserves instead. A straight build out of the box will give you two of each positional, which is a fine way to start, but you do want another two ghouls to have the option to go up to four, so the second box comes in handy. This also gives you more linemen, which you will need, as the team has the Masters of Undeath special rule. Anytime you kill a strength 4 or less opposing player, you get a free zombie. Necromantic Horror 
Necromantic horror is a different take on the undead team. You still have zombies and ghouls, but instead of whites and mummies, you get wraiths, werewolves, flesh cults. Again, everyone except the ghouls have regeneration, making this a pretty hard team to kill. Add to that, the flesh golems have stand firm, the wraiths sidestep, and the werewolves have frenzy. So this team can be very good at controlling who ends up where, but lacks the raw strength of the shambling undead team. All the positionals are capped at two, which means one box will get you all you need. Getting this along with the shambling undead box will get you those two extra ghouls that you're missing for the undead team. Chaos Chosen. Chaos Chosen is a pretty simple team. You get four chosen blockers and eight beastmen linemen in the box. These are all great players, but essentially lack any skills apart from token horns and beastmen. This makes them a great base for development in a campaign, where once they do get the skills, they'll also have the numbers to back them up. What you don't get in the box is a big guy. Chaos Chosen could take one troll, minotaur, or ogre. If you pick up the core box for Blood Bowl, you already have a troll and an ogre, so you've already got some options. Nurgle. The box has four bloaters, two pestigores, and six rotter linemen. You can only have four bloaters, so you're good there. But you can have four pestigores. And as they are speed six and ag three, they're your best player for actually handling the ball. Now, chances are in a starting roster, you're only going to play two of them. So one box is a good start, but long term, you'll want to get those extra two. You're playing this as a bash team, so you're looking to crump opposing players. When you manage to kill an opposing player with strength four or less, then you get to use a plague ridden skill, which is on all of your players, to turn the dead player into a new rotter lineman for yourself. Their big guy is the Rot Spot, a strength five mighty blow blob for the front line. This team is a menace to play against. The four bloaters and Rot Spawn all have disturbing presence and foul appearance. So if you try to block them, you roll a d6, and on a one you fail. If you try to pass or catch the ball while within three squares of them, that's a minus one penalty. And that stacks for each bloater or rot spawn within three squares. Corn. Putting the blood and skulls in Blood Bowl, we have the Corn team. This box has six Bloodborne Marauder linemen, four Bloodseekers, and two Corn Gore. The roster can have an additional two Corn Gore, which is why this team needs two boxes. A lot of the starting rosters only have two though, so you certainly can get into the action with that one box. But you will need that second box when you're developing your team in the league. The team of this team is Frenzy, and the Corn Gore are the only players who do not have it, so you need to be careful. The Bloodseeker with their strength 4 can get a lot of work done with Frenzy, but the lineman with only strength 3 will often need support. With Frenzy, it's not enough to just think about your first block, you also have to consider the next block too. And if that puts you in a bad position, maybe you don't block at all. Your big guy is the blood spawn, another frenzy piece, this time with string five, claws, and mighty blow. That's a lot of murder. And while that's going on, it's up to the corn cores to step in, pick up the ball, and try score. Norse. Last in the bash teams, we have the Norse. This box has new sculpts for a very old team, and along with it brought a update to the rules, changing them significantly. As one of the newer releases, it has all the positionals you need in just one box. The box has six Norse Raider linemen, two Beer Boars, two Norse Berserkers, two Ulfwerners, and two Valkyries. You're just missing the Yeti as the big guy to round out your options. Linemen are some of the best in the game. They have movement six, strength three, ag three, and block, making them a really solid core. The Beer Boars are a bit of a gimmick. They're very weak and can't handle the ball. So in play, they're best used to foul and open up some starting list options because they're so cheap. The Berserkers are your blitzers. They have block and frenzy along with move 6. The Old Runners have move 6, strength 4 and frenzy, making them a great reactive player to take out unsupported enemy players. Valkyries have move 7. They don't have block, but do have catch and pass. So they'll be good ball handlers and with Dauntless and Strip Ball can be good at taking the ball from the enemy ball characters. Finesse teams. While the Bash teams focus on beating up their opponents, there is another way to play. It turns out you win the game by actually scoring touchdowns. Finesse teams spend more of their time getting the ball to the end zone than they do brutalizing their opponents. They typically have low armor values, so they try their best to avoid a direct buy, although they're not above the occasional shift through ribs. In previous editions, the agility and passing trait were one, so teams that were good at dodging out of tackle zones were also good at passing the ball. Not so anymore. 
in the most recent edition, the passing skill was added. This means that some teams favor a running game, while others favor a passing game. Keep that in mind as we go through the various teams. Wood Elves. First up we have the Wood Elves. They are move 7 base, with catchers and war dancers at move 8. They are all 2 plus agility, with the throwers having pass 2 plus, along with pass skill to make sure. Catchers have catch and dodge, so you're getting the ball to your thrower, and then they throw it to your catcher, who will make that run to the end zone and score. On the downside, they all have low armor at 8 armor value, so they're quite fragile. The war dancers do have block and dodge, so they can be an effective blitzer. They do have leap, so they can skip the opposing defensive line and go straight for the ball carrier. The box has two of each of the positionals, but you can have four of the catchers, which is where the second box comes in. It's also common enough to have seven to nine linemen, so that second box will round out those. The team doesn't have a lot of punch, but you do need to put players in a lot of slaughter, and that's where the tree man comes in. He's expensive, but an effective way to hold the line while the rest of your team plays the ball. Elven Union Elven Union are similar, but lose war dancers and instead get blitzers who have block and sidestep. These are a little slower than what else, with linemen and throwers at 6 move and the blitzer at 7, but the catcher is still at 8. On the plus side, everything is a little cheaper, so paying for all those options is a lot easier. You have the same problem with the box, which has only 2 catchers, while you can't have 4 in total. You can certainly start a team with just 2 catchers, but as we keep saying, in the long run, you'll want 4 in your team. Notably, the catchers have nerves of steel, which means they can't ignore penalties for enemy tackle zones when catching. Along with their Act 2, that means it's very hard to stop them from scoring. Dark Elves. While other elf teams focus on scoring, the Dark Elves don't neglect the good things in life. They do not have a catcher or thrower. Their best passing player is the runner at 3 plus. So this isn't really a passing team. They are still fast though, with the linemen at 6 and everyone else at 7, so they do have a great running game. The box has 6 linemen, 2 blitzers, 2 runners, and 2 witch elves. Not only are you missing 2 of your 4 blitzers, but you're entirely missing the assassins. You really want those 4 blitzers with block, so 2 boxes it is. In a league, you look to get 2 witch elves and 4 blitzers before you look at the assassins. The assassin is a really interesting player, taken for his stab skill, which lets you skip straight to the armor roll once per turn. This works best against teams with low armor and skills like dodge or block that would make them hard to knock down normally. This means you'll only want assassins against certain matchups, such as Wood Elves, Elven Union, Skaven, Norse, or Amazons. Often, rather than adding an assassin to the roster, coaches will use cash from inducements to pay for a mercenary assassin as a once-off. This really is a precision team. They're fast with good agility, so you can get them where you want to and play the ball. You also have some offensive abilities like blocking your blitzers, frenzy your witch elf, and stab on your assassins. Keep your own players out of trouble, and then gang up on key opposing players to open up plays for your runners or blitzers to score. Skaven. Skaven are a bit of a mix. You have the gutter runners who are move 9, ag 2 with dodge. Absolutely amazing. You also have a thrower with pass 2 plus, along with the pass skill and sure hands. So you do have a throwing game. But more often than not, your good runners will just be zooming across the pitch too fast for your opponent to catch. Along with that, you have two blisters who have block and a rat over big guy. So you can hold the line for a little bit, but with your team's general low armor, you can expect them to go down in time. The box has two of each of the positionals, so again, we're looking for two more good runners. The typical starting team either has the four good runners or a rat ogre, with the goal of eventually getting all on the roster. Amazons. Last in the finesse teams, we have the Amazons. Like the Norse, they were a recently released update to an old team. To get everything you need out of the box, along with the line women, they can have two throwers, two blitzers, and two blockers. So one box has everything you need. All move six and act three, apart from the blitzer who is move seven. Everyone on the team has dodge, which in theory makes this team agile, but in practice makes them harder to knock down, as dodge helps during a block. There is definitely an argument to be made that they are more of a hybrid team than a finesse team, and you certainly can play them that way, especially once you start getting some skill ups and are able to give them block along with that dodge. That said, the relatively low armor value of 8 on a majority of the players pushes them towards the finesse category. The thrower has Ag 3 and passing 3. She's not super reliable as you have in some of the other finesse teams, but when on the ball she's able to move 3 squares after an opposing pass is declared or after a kickoff. You don't have a catcher to throw to, 
so she might end up your ball carrier for a lot of the time. Alternatively, the Blitzer is fast with move 7. Either way, expect it to be a running game rather than a passing game. The blockers are going to be some of your stars. With that 4 strength, they'll be able to make some gaps for you to play through. As this version of the game is relatively new, it's hard to say with certainty how the team should be played, but it does look like they're currently doing that. Hybrid teams. Next up we have the hybrid teams. These are the ones who go bash against a finesse team and go finesse versus a bash team. Teams like this are great to start with, as it gives you a chance to learn both styles. Often these teams are split, with some players being bash players and others within the team being finesse players. Imperial Nobility. Our first team is out of the core box, the Imperial Nobility. You do get a full set of positions out of this box, which is great. You also get a Ogre in the starter box, which rounds it out perfectly. Bodyguards aren't going to get pushed around as they had stand firm. They have a good shot at taking their opponent down with the rest ability, so they're making a solid defensive line along with the Ogre. You have a Troar with Ag 3 and Pass, so you can play a bit of a passive game. The stars of your team by intention are the Noble Blitzers. These are move 7 with block, so they can dish out some damage, but they also have catch, so you can use them as a receiver. With Ag 3 on your Troars and Blitzers, you're probably better off just going for handoff though, but the option is there. Black Orcs. The other team from the core box is the Black Orcs. These are split into Black Orcs and Goblins, with the trained troll as their big guy. You can have up to 6 Black Orcs, and will likely take all of them, along with a troll and 5 Goblins. Again, you have everything in the box that you need. The Black Orcs are all 4 strengths, but only move 4, so slow but dangerous. Brawler lets them reroll a boat down, while Grab lets them control where pushbacks go. But they don't start out with the classic block and dodge skills so they're mostly just relying on their strength. Meanwhile, the Goblin Bruisers are move 6 with Ag 3 and dodge, so they are going to be your ball handlers, hopefully shielded behind a screen of Black Orcs. Lizardmen. Similar to Black Orcs, this team is split into the big Saurus players and the small Skin players. The Saurus have no skills but strength 4. They do have Ag 5, so it's unlikely that they'll ever end up with ball. Unlike the Black Orcs, they are fast with move 6. Similarly, the big guy, the Croxgoy, is also move 6, and these are the slow part of your team. The skinks are 8 move and are your linemen. They have an okay agility of 3 with dodge, but don't have a passing game with your pass of 4. With strength 2, 8 armor and stunty, they're quite fragile. And there's also the chameleon skink, who has on the ball and shadowing 10k more, but you lose 1 move and get 3 plus pass instead. Typically it's worth taking at least 1. The goal with this team is to use the Saurus to hold off the other team while the Skinks score. A common tactic against them is to take out all the Skinks, leaving the remaining Saurus unable to carry the ball at all. You can build a 6 Saurus, 1 Chameleon Skink and 4 Skink team out of the box, but in a league you'll develop into the Croc score, and having one also opens up a few additional starting roster options. Humans. Last in our hybrid teams list are the Humans. These are the poster boys for hybrid. The Troar has Pass and Sure Hands with Pass 2 plus, and is possibly one of the best Troars in the game. The Catcher has Catch and Dodge with Ag 3 and Move 8. The Blitzer is Move 7 with Strength 3 and Block. The numbers aren't always great, but you always have the skills to back them up. This pretty much sums up the team. Average, but with the skills you need. How you play them will depend on the team you're facing and the situation you're in. They aren't going to be able to outscore an Elf team or I bash an orc team, but they will have the tools they need to switch the game they're playing when they see it open. You can't take an ogre to improve the line of scrimmage, and GW recently added the option for up to three halflings on the team. The halflings bring two things to the team. They're cheap, and they have the right stuff, so if you want to set up a troll teammate with the ogre you can. The box does not have all the positions you need, it has two of each of the catcher, blitzer and troar, but you can have four catchers and four blitzers. It would also be nice to have at least one halfling as an option. Stunty teams. The last set of teams are all in tier 3. They are the stunty teams, named after the skill, which lets them ignore minus 1 penalties per mark when dodging, but also makes them more prone to injury if they go down. These are described in the core book as the most difficult teams to master and will often lose. They also have some incredibly fun mechanics and can be a real laugh to play. Snotlings. The first team are the Snotlings. These green skins are even smaller than goblins. The box has enough for a full roster, that's 2 pump wagons, 6 secret weapons, 
and 12 snarkles. You will want to get your hands on two trolls to add a little backbone to the team. Trolls on a pump wagon will give you the strength to get some targets down, and then it's time for fouling, and lots of fouling. The swarming skill lets you sneak some extra snarlings onto the pitch, but since they are snarlings, they're really easy to be removed. The pump wagon and the fungus flinga are secret weapons, so part of the skill is knowing when to deploy your secret weapons, having enough bribes to stop them being sent off the drive. As you might expect with a snotling team, it's mostly madness. Halflings. The halfling team is a little bit more straightforward. They have a lineman with dodge, catchers with catch, and hefty who have fend to hold the line. They also can't take two treatment, which is where the real power of this team comes in. Everything is slow though. The halflings are all five moves while the treatment are moved two. Because the halfling team is so cheap, a common tactic is to fill out the roster but leave 400 gold free to be spent on a star player like Deep Root Strong Branch and inducements like the halfling Master Chef. With the Master Chef, at the start of each half, you roll three dice, and for every four plus, you gain a reroll and your opponent loses one. No matter how you spin it, this is just a hard team to play. The box has all the halflings you need, but you definitely should be getting those two treatments to go along with it. Goblins. Like the Snotling team, the Goblin team has a lot of secret weapon spots. They have a bomber, Looney, Fanatic, Hogor, Hooligan, and Doom Divers, so it is mayhem on the pitch. They also get to take two trolls, which keeps the opposing team honest. The box only has goblins, so you'll need to get the secret weapon and the trolls separately. Ogres. Weirdly enough, the Ogre team also counts as a stunt team. That's because the Ogres only make up part of the team, and the majority are actually Noblars, who are brave Snotlings. You can have five ogres and one run punter, who is an ogre with kick teammate rather than short teammate. Unfortunately, all of the ogres have bonehead, which means there's always a one in six that they just won't do anything. The box has enough for three ogres and one run punter, along with 12 noblars, so you're missing two ogres for the full roster. The ogres have a lot of punch, but they're very unreliable and eventually the dice will betray you. The Noblars will have to do all the work handling the ball, with Ag 3 and no ball handling skills that will be tricky. And that's it, all the teams GW currently have in production. But I've left a few out. There are four teams from the teams of Legend, Chaos Dwarves, High Elves, Tomb Kings and Vampires. These are all teams that don't currently have models, but once did, and do still have some legacy rules. Eventually we can expect to see these rules be updated, and new models released, as happened with the Norse and the Amazons. There are also three Alliance teams, Underworld Denizens, Chaos Renegades, and the Old World Alliance. These teams are made up of a mix of players from various different teams. The Underworld Denizens have Goblins, Snotlings, and Skaven. The Chaos Renegades have Humans, Goblins, Orcs, Skaven, and Dark Elves, while the Old World Alliance have Humans, Dwarves, and Halflings. These once had boxes, but they're currently out of print, and they're the sort of teams that you put together after you've got a few other teams under your belt. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.